gorgeous being. Today, if you would like to, you can watch me for the very first time listen to Cemetery Gates by Pantera. I'm also going to try and analyse it because that is just what we do here. <laughs> kind of another super famous band to add to the list of super famous bands that Lolly has never heard of, even though everyone else has heard of them. Selection. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm sure you often look in your wardrobe and wonder, why don't I have the world's nicest hoodie in here? Well. <coughs> the strings are too tight. Weird is good, so you can have one string up, one string down, both strings the same. I feel like I'm gonna do a Britney Spears music video. It's a quote from one of my videos with the flying larynx, and it's really the comfiest hoodie I've ever worn in my life. If you like nice things, especially nice hoodies, I've said my piece. <laughs> Nice funeral attire. Nice. Isn't that remarkable? The way they've almost managed to make the guitar sound like a voice. When he jumps up the octave like that, so instantly, and then back down and then back up again, it really gives us the impression that it's like a yodel, like it's going from mode one, ah, uh, speech range, where the vocal folds are thick, to ah, uh, mode two, where the vocal folds are thin and long. Now, I think that's mainly because of the use of the instrument in two very extreme ends of its sound qualities. But it's the fact that he's only got vibrato on the top one. It's exactly what a singer would do. Da -da! Like to let that really ring at the top. It's immensely pleasing to the ear, I will say. Wow! I don't know if that was deliberate. Or whether the guitarist is also a singer, so he has those kind of same tendencies. <laughs> or maybe he's just a guitarist that deeply respects and understands the capabilities of the instrument, so he doesn't just play the guitar in a guitar-y way. And if we think of what it takes to be a truly skilled musician, part of that is obviously the dexterity to play very fast passages. But I do really believe that the bulk of any given musician's brilliance is usually when they have this gigantic shed full of the most fanciest tools available, but they don't try and use a lawnmower to trim the bush. <laughs> That's killed it. They deploy the right tools at the right time for the right reasons. <laughs> like, wow. Deep respect for the guitar. There they are. <laughs> singing is absolutely bloody blinding. He opens up the song with a lot of what we call glottal compression. So for normal notes sounds like this. A note with glottal compression would sound like this. So glottal compression is when the space in between the vocal folds of the glottis is compressed. <laughs> can squeeze those vocal folds together so they get this kind of tight sound. If you do it too much, you can sound a little bit constipated, but a little bit of it is actually quite nice to create a little bit of ambience. Reverend, you turn to me. As opposed to Reverend, it's held. Without a tear in his eyes. Without a tear in his eyes. So it does provide a particular atmosphere. And I like it very much, I really do. But the coolest thing about it is that he then stops doing it. So it's a very versatile, juicy listening, <laughs> juicy listening experience. Oh! 
<laughs> Bloody hell. Oh my god. Oh, this is very intricate. How long have you got? Oh, there's a lot. Okay, first thing is the guitarist is absolutely fucking unbelievable. The way that he has metamorphosized what it is to be the guitarist of a band. He went from that very singy intro into the verse where he, you know, just played some cute little arpeggios. because that was the time for the singer to like do his thing, which was also phenomenal. And then into the chorus, he's like, shreddy and ready for everything. It's quite rare for me to be so distracted and overwhelmed by a guitar part, but I am. Well, I guess, yeah. Getting a little bit of that glottal, compl like, glottal compression come back when he wants to start making it a bit more feisty. Because it's so tight and because it really squishes those vocal folds together, you can use it as a foundation for grip over the top. Without it, the false folds would sound like <sighs> But with it, we can get something that's like because we have a foundation, which means the breath pressure is consistent. And that is very important if you want to do growly stuff. So these wide vowels that he's using definitely contribute to his ability to locate the distortion here as well. If it's big and wide, everything just gets tighter and tighter in some contexts is definitely bad but in this context it's definitely the reason that he's been able to find this type of kind of shrill distortion and we know that he's going for that kind of high shrill sound because he really leans into it, gave it, all away. Gave it all away. but not for the whole chorus because straight after when he does the word joy i think it was he drops it a lot and we get a much darker tone this vowel shape uh, is encouraging the distortion to happen lower like the birth of a new found joy and also this low shape promotes the resonance happening lower as well and so it's very important to just know where you want your voice to go if it's distorted or clean for that matter when we don't know exactly where we want our voice to go whether it's high middle or low we just reel off a bunch of random vowels and we can get very tight we can start coughing and stuff because it's just an incomplete set of instructions from your brain to your voice it's like if your friend was going to go to tesco and they asked you if you want anything and you said, yeah, 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 I want just anything. I'll just, just get me anything. You know, you can't be surprised when your friend comes back with a chainsaw and in your mind you would have preferred a Mars bar. It's just not how it works. He has the spiciest of voices. Like it can do so much without it sounding random. You know that sometimes like singers deliberately do tricks for the sake of doing tricks. <laughs> Lots of lovely tricks. But although the technical level of this vocal performance is way up there it's extremely difficult to move the distortion to so many places so quickly with so much accuracy plus you've got that heavy thick vibrato you've got the gentle compressing in it there's loads of stuff that he's doing but none of it sounds weird it all just sounds really appropriate and necessary i'm starting to feel the message of this song might be rather dark as well and then that makes me feel another layer about it because i'm like mm, i don't know if i want to enjoy it too much because I feel like I'm enjoying someone's suffering. I just feel like I should be beholding the message. Just sort of pay my respects. But it's difficult when the music is so good. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. Let's just not try. Let's just feel the feelings. I want to hear that little pause before the next verse again. <laughs> Now I've clocked a few of those lyrics and I'm kind of starting to put the pieces together of what he might be talking about. I'm listening out for them more. And it seems like he's mourning 
a girl who maybe also is a victim of the similar kind of suffering that he's been through. And I think partly why it's so poignant is because it's so specific. Beautiful confessions of pain. I love how it's structured like the chorus is the bit where he really gets to sort of vent about the way that he's feeling and that's when we get the bulk of the distortion but the chords are very supportive and then as soon as that chorus drops out it gets very dissonant you know wow his pharynx is a magical place. Everything is so organized in there. You can hear so clearly the tune of the chorus. There is a very evident pitched vocal throughout the whole thing with just that little rumble of supraglottic tissue. Now, all supraglottic distortion is not created equally. There is loads of types and there's loads of very minute changes that you can make that completely revolutionize the sound for example through all those complex years like that is also technically supraglottic distortion with a pitched vocal throughout but that sounds like C is for cookie. and this sounds cool so there's obviously very distinct differences and they're subtle and they're very dependent on who's performing them if you've been practicing distortion already you will know that there's certain things that your voice does naturally a lot better than others and that's important to know when you're trying these techniques because he sounds so amazing and so clear and so safe because he's found exactly what type of distortion works for him. He's got two very distinct placements. It's here, ah, and it's here. Uh, and he's got his glottal compression and he's using all of those ingredients to create something that sounds like this. So it's important to experiment with different shapes and be deliberate because you are special and unique. You're all little vocal unicorns. So still in there. He's got a very similar timbre to someone. I can't remember who it is, but we've analyzed him before and I'll have a look and put it here if I remember. <laughs> There was a different kind of distortion there. The vocal folds had a tiny bit of aperiodic vibration, which means they didn't come together perfectly. They kind of jammed up for a second. And I think that's what you're hearing there. It creates this kind of weird subharmonic frequency. And that's fun. And now it's there. I don't know why I spent so long talking about something that lasted like a quarter of a second, but let's move on. more heavenly when they said they're going to pass the cemetery gates. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Oh my god, amazing. Do everything. Exactly when he's supposed to do it. Oh my goodness, wow. Oh my god, the coffin's going on. Oh, that's terrifying. Wow. That scene is probably going to give me a nightmare later, but it's okay.
way. Get out. That is absolutely extraordinary. Are you joking? <laughs> ah, ah! This has come full circle at the end because I knew it. I knew it. I knew it at the beginning. This guitarist was a singer. I mean, I definitely want another ride on that train though, don't you? Let's have another go. You see how it wasn't at all like a falsetto? Good. <laughs> no. Good. It had actual mode one in it. It was a belt. <laughs> it was connected. And even as he gets higher and higher and he steps right up to his top note, which was like, Good. he doesn't sound weak. And that is remarkable. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with this outro. It's like the best outro I've ever heard in my life because this is a lovely segue. <laughs> it's got to be one of the best guitarists I've ever heard. The way that he mimics the voice, this amount of awareness about music. That slide at the end he does like. falling off a little bit before he slides all the way down. And the tone is remarkable. He must have spent a lot of hours pedal fiddling for that. Before you head off into your day over there, let's just read out today's oracle card. The Panda of Perspective. We can only see what we know. And seeing we only know about 5% of the matter of the universe, we know f all. So just remember that next time when you have an opinion or someone judges you, Peace out. <laughs> nice. I like that a lot. Anyone else that has exposed themselves on the internet? I mean, not, I don't expose, I mean, just facially, whatever. Just anyone that has an internet presence needs to hear that. Because <laughs> it's a judgy place out here. Anyway, you're not, you're lovely. So, thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it and that it might warrant you a like and extremely valuable subscription to my channel. If you made it to the premiere, then big premiere hug for you. If you're here at any other time, please accept this hug for you too. If you'd like to support the creation of my work, either on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon, I will do a happy dance. If you want something else to watch now, you can have a gander at this. It's just another video of me listening to and analyzing music. But if you enjoyed this, I think you'll enjoy that one too. Mwah. See you soon. Bye. Love you. The panda has no perspective without glasses. That's not what it says. <laughs> okay. Hello, gorgeous. Today we're gonna, <laughs> why do I always do it with a thigh slap? When they have a tool full of sheds. No, that isn't what I meant. Oh, me. speaking is hard. It's <laughs> not a very good analogy. Oh, need a wee now. Every hoodie comes with a free destroyed hairstyle. Ah!